Welcome back. Uh, today we're continuing on day nine, sensor boost. And you'll note that uh, last time I had quite a bit of frustration trying to implement this in Kotlin. Today we are going to continue that frustration, but having solved the problem in Scala with the assistance of various voices on the internet, um, we are going to forge forward and see if I can learn how to code in Kotlin and still get the right answer. Um, okay, I suppose we should review the problem first. So you've just said goodbye to the rebooted rover that you just rebooted on Mars uh, and left Mars. Um, and you get a faint distress signal coming from the asteroid belt. That's from the Sears monitoring set, uh, station. In order to lock onto the signal, you need to boost your sensors. So the elves send up the latest boost program, which is kind of like a BIOS, um, to make sure that your hardware and software are calibrated correctly. Um, and so this introduces a concept of a relative base. So when you're doing memory-based lookups, um, then our parameter-based lookups of things in memory and parameter based well i was going to say writes into memory um and that is true uh then this applies keep in mind that immediate mode still does not apply to memory writes so when you get um, a write instruction um immediate mode does not apply to the value that you're writing you don't write the number one to position one just because the parameter is a one um, when you write you still uh, do either a non-relative base or a relative base offset and what stumped me for the longest time is that the relative base instruction also applies to the thing that adjusts um, the base parameter so there's an accumulator in your computer that keeps track of what the relative offset for the next read or write, if you're doing a relative uh, lookup, is. And here I'm failing to apply that. And I should probably just create a new function here, call it rebase or something. Um, yeah, why not? What's the worst that could happen? All right, so. Uh, 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 adjust. <laughs> oh my goodness. I don't remember what I wrote that for. This is going to be lovely. So we have a jump. We have a step. Where the heck did I declare base? Um... I mean, all this considered, I probably could just stuck some sort of memory address minus one out there or something instead of keeping a separate parameter. But we've dug in this far. We're going to see it through. Um, plus, the, this is more explicit and therefore less confusing. Um, oh, I see, I see where yeah here's the comparison to perform if mode blah this else blah um so we're gonna have some more fun so we're gonna say rebase and instead of saying we have a memory we're we're just gonna have a base which is an int and since base is already provided Blah, blah, blah. Um, wait. Um, all right, so we've already looked up val p. And we don't need a print line instruction. And we're not going to do an assignment. We are just going to do this. Um, Wait, where is mode? Did I not pass in a mode here? 
I did not pass in a mode. We're going to pass mode in prior to base. As we've done so many other places, we don't require really any of this. Um, and we'll just do the assignment inline like that. All right. So, yeah, this is going to take a parameter. And if the mode is to return people space, else return P. Um, so base is equal to rebase of, tell me what my parameters are again. That's not helping. Uh, memory. Oh, I'm sorry. I do need the memory buffer. Because I'm not incrementing the base. I'm incrementing the index with which I look up something in memory. Um, some memory at address determined by the parameter. Uh, ay, ay, ay. That's not helping. Why am I printing so many things? It's because I'm so confused. Input. Output. Long is equal to read from memory. Oh, I have a read function. Yeah, my read function will suffice just fine. I don't need to define a second read function. Um... Now, I understand that this is a write instruction, uh, base plus whatever, however I defined read. Uh, and I defined read m mode base p. Uh, and p here, I think. Oh, M represents the entire memory buffer. Is that right? Um, mode is here translated from I dot mode. And here I think this is just not the program counter, but program counter plus one. Uh, if immediate mode return the value itself, which we're not doing else um, yeah if the mode is to do it the look up one way else do it the other way all right I think that's what I want um, so I want a memory lookup based on the value that I've looked up here Is this really going to be memory at PC plus one? I hope I'm not doing a double array lookup that I don't mean to be doing. All right, and we require an int, so we shall have such an int. Wait, do I have my two int structure incorrect? I thought there wasn't. Yeah, two int. Oh, two int's not a pointer here. It's not a method reference. You need to literally call the function. Um, so let me reread the instruction. It adjusts the relative base by the value of its only parameter. The relative base increases or decreases by the value of the parameter. What is the value of the parameter? Well, uh, if you have an instruction with a 9, oh, I'm sorry, if you have a relative base of 50 and a relative mode parameter of minus 7, you just literally subtract that, the minus 7. Um, wait, so this read thing I'm doing is incorrect then. Yeah, because what I want is not a memory-based lookup to figure out how much to reduce that by. Oh, can I take a look at some code you wrote uh, when I have an opportunity? You're on 2018 working with Java. Um, you just want to eat. Sure, just, okay. Um, yeah, one second here. 
Uh, I wish I had my stream configured. Oops, one second. I did that wrong. Uh, let's try that. Yeah, feel free to share the link. I don't know how I'm going to manage to get that link onto my screen. Unless I can remember, I can type it that, out the URL here. Um, possibly my Discord might be a better place to also try to share this. Um, because there's other folks who might be able to help you as well. Um, but yeah, if you drop your link here, um, and if my bot bans you, I'll unban you or whatever. Um, I probably didn't give you enough advanced warning for sharing that. Uh, does this work? Yeah. Apparently my bot's not so sophisticated. Uh, but yeah, the Discord would be the best place to share that. Um, because I might not be able to... Oh! Uh, yeah, no, okay. Yeah, I haven't looked at Avenue Code 2018 at all. Um... So I'm going to have to look up what the problem is, too, and try to understand it. I might not even have access to the problem you're trying to solve. No, I'm sorry. I have access to all of them. This isn't like some other sites. Um, but, yeah, if it's not too long, I might be able to read it and might be able to figure it out that way. Um, haven't thought about that. That's interesting. Uh, all right, so I did something stupid here. Here, what I don't want to do is what I did. Instead, I want just the logic contained herein. Um, relative mode parameter of minus seven. So they give some example programs here. Um, yeah, I don't know that the example programs make any sense, so uh, rather than that, we're just going to do this. Um, mm -hmm. If i.mode is a 2, we're going to say memory at pc plus 1 to int else memory at pc plus 1 to int. So that's going to be kind of weird. I think. No, I still got it wrong. Index at 12,000. That's, that's pretty far off. I'll have to look up what I did um, in my uh, other solution. So I don't have multiple browser tabs here. Um, let's see. So where's here's my stats page. How do I get to my profile page from here? leaderboard yeah that's how i get to it then from here we go to our private leaderboard with all the cool people on it and oh my goodness i'm in first on this board um so recently i just started publishing my advent of code 2019 solutions and one of these solutions has been in scala and it works and I know it works because I submitted the solution off stream and okay so for a nine instruction we read oh yeah I do use read plus equals read of that to int and I use the same read function anytime I'm reading parameter okay so let's go back to day nine So yeah, what I had here with the whole read thing was not so bad. Um, aside from possibly what I did there with the double array lookup. 
and all I just care is about program counter plus one. Uh, so this is finding. <laughs> all right, does that work? Program counter plus one long. There we go. Uh, does this compile? And if it does, is this good enough? I should probably check if this. No, I still have a 203 error. Why? Do the examples pass before we get into anything too complicated again? Um, so they give us three example, three tests. And I should verify that we get a copy of the original program. There it is, ending in 99. Then you get the big number and this big number, and that all looks good. Okay. Um. Hmm. All right. Does Kotlin support the plus equals operator? Gosh, I hope so. Okay, yeah, it does. Um. <sighs> I'm confused. Okay, so we pass these tests. We've got the original program here. Um, I don't need the full memory dump, but it'd be interesting to see how this compares step by step with what my working solution does. 16 jumps to 1024. Oh, I'm sorry, this is the base. For ease of my understanding, I'm going to stick the program counter first. Um, so everybody's done this for years, is that the program counter is always one of the early columns in an output because um, that really gives structure to where your program's jumping. Um, plus it lines up kind of nicely here. So here I've incremented base to 16 and to 1024. Um, so I want to compare this with my Scala solution. But I also don't have a good way to convey that comparison on stream. Um, let me just quickly hack this together and figure out what the number should be. Um, so switch to this environment, CD admin of code. All right, I'm going to need this terminal full screen. Let's open the tmux. Get that running. Oops. I guess Tmux wasn't. No, it is necessary because I'm going to split screen this screen and cd to source main Scala run problem nine and put a print instruction in my thing. Uh, so, print line of PC. All right, so I'm going to get a dump here any second now, which will tell me what the line numbers are. Oh my god, that's a lot of line numbers. Holy moly, that's a lot of line numbers. All right. So, the line... Oh, I've overflowed my buffer. Okay, well, that's cool. Um, all right, it's sbt run one.txt. And we'll just look at the one.txt file. Oh, Discord general chat, very nice, cool. Let me see if I can take a quick look at that while um, 
my program's running. Let's see. Okay, 2018 question one, part two. Got an input.txt file. And a screenshot. All right, so, okay. Question two, got a buffered reader for the file. All results gets put into a list of integer. Oh, I want to open the original image so I can actually see. Okay, there we go. Um, while you've got lines in the file, we parse int on line. And if all results contains the current sum, all right, we're going to go. This is question two, part one. Let's take a look at this together. Uh, how do I get back to a previous year? Calendar? Nope. <laughs> uh, about? Oh, I'm sorry. I've got the URL string right here. I bet that works. All right. Question two, part one. Uh, so this is... I'm sorry, this is day one, part two. Yeah, I don't have any of the part two problem descriptions, so um, I'm going to struggle with that. But, all right. Um, we've got a concept of... So if all results contains current sum, we print out the current sum and break out of the loop. Otherwise, we continue adding currents. Um... Yeah, I'm going to maybe need a better description of the problem. Let's see. Question one, part two. Uh, yeah, I don't have question one. I can only see part one of it. Oh, it might be easier to Google it. Yeah, you might be right. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, Advent of Code 2018, Day 1, Part 2. Okay, wow. They got some answers on Reddit for this. Can you tell me why this took five minutes? Um, instead of appending a list and doing sum, uh, just keep a running total. It's apparently what somebody did. Um, if the frequency drift is in the previous sum, then we stop looping and break. Okay, yeah, it looks like your control flow seems to match up with what somebody else put on Reddit. So why does that not work? I wonder. Um... So it looks like you coded the same thing that somebody else coded. So, like, unless this is some dumb thing where you, you can't use integers or something, um, I wonder what it could be. Uh, What's the first frequency your device reaches twice? Okay, so... Interesting. Huh. Yeah, no, I'm looking at your solution. It looks good. Um, so, like, unless your sum is out of the range of, like, 2 billion or something... Um, I don't know what could have gone wrong. If it is out of range, you might consider using longs instead of ints, but, um, hmm. Yeah, so you, sounds like you said your program's running, but you're getting the wrong answer. Yeah, 
And somebody did this using like, that looks like Python and it finished in a second. Yeah, I'm not sure. Oh, it doesn't find the value at all. I'm sorry. I'm trying to read like the problem, your your code, which is embedded inside of a screenshot, and then watch the chat at the same time. And I'm struggling to keep up with all those things. Um, um, it's almost as if there were no duplicates. Maybe you got an impossible input set. I guess after the stream here, I'll try experimenting with that input set. And Actually, <laughs> so I'm like 10 days behind and all my coworkers are like 10 days ahead of me on this thing. So I want to get through 2019, but also like that's question one. So I do kind of want to try to do that. Um, um, I guess I would suggest download somebody else's working source code, compare it step by step to see which step your thing is doing different. And if their code is not printing out enough information for you to figure out which program is doing something different, um, add more print lines to both programs. That's kind of what I went through and what I'm currently going through with this problem I'm on. Um, where... Oh, come on. Um, all right, so I just dumped out a file in front of me. 0, 4, 8, 11, 15, 17, 19, 21, 23, 25, 27, 31, 65. That's not a 65. So somewhere up here is my bug. So I need to start printing out more stuff or figure out why I didn't get to 65 here. Uh, so I should get 31 plus 34. And instead I got 31 and then went directly to 34. So there's my 65. So this is uh, 2024 is um, a base. And my mode is 10, my op. Yeah, let's move my base over a bit. Um, so here we've got no. Um, mm -hmm. I'm debating what. Yeah, this ordering's probably fine, but still. Um, I should print out more information so I could get an apples to apples comparison. Um, m1.txt, no, I want to remove 1.txt and have it print out the same stuff I've got over here. So I've got PC, base, um, mode, op. It's probably a good start. Um, memory of PC uh, plus one. Um, yeah, why don't I just print out the whole everything? Memory of PC plus three. Uh, okay. And then here I want to dump that output again. Oh, dang. Wow. Sorry to hear that. Um, yeah, um, I will get to that as soon as I can. Um, I apologize. It's probably going to be until like New Year's or something, just because I am 10 days behind on this thing and endeavoring to solve it both in two new languages that um, I'm learning at the same time. So uh, I would be more inclined to help but I also spent like eight hours debugging my chess engine uh, it's just been a crazy week between that and work so 
Uh, I will get to that as soon as I can, but um, unless like I have difficulty sleeping, I'm probably not going to get to it. Um, so we'll see how that goes. I'll get to it as soon as I can, though. Uh, so I just dumped out um, whoops forward reference extends over definition of value mode don't know what that means but it probably means I didn't code something right um, Memory PC to int. Uh, oh, there we go. I had to switch the order in which those got printed. Or, okay, and let's try that again. Run that, dump to one.txt. And then take a look at the first 40 lines of this. Also, possibly, maybe somebody in the Discord might figure it out. Or maybe I'll assemble an army of enough people in this channel that we'll just have people to help me out. Or maybe there's also a Leech Us Discord. There's a number of... I don't know. I'll have to gather general interest in this challenge um, from just Leech Us members in general. See who's pursuing this actively. So 1716? No, 17988. Um, okay. That's different. Here's a 988. So this is a add instruction. No, 15. This is program counter, 15. Base 0. That specifies immediate mode. Oh, that's to say that immediate mode applies to this as well? Can that be? How did my other program work? But, um, so, this is an immediate mode, no. What am I printing out? I'm printing out program counter the base base is currently zero um, the mode the opcode is a nine memory PC I didn't need to print memory PC because that's just confusing me um, it's comprised of those other values but yeah the next value over the 988 should be read in immediate mode directly summed into base. Um, what's wrong with my read instruction then? If mode mod 10 is 1, p else this stuff. Um, mode mod 10 is definitely 1. Oh, yes, I did have this wrong. Again, I want the memory value at PC plus one. I cannot read to save my life. But we'll try that. No? What's wrong here? Excuse me. Required long, and I'm apparently returning a mutable list of long. How the hell did that happen? PC plus one. Now I want to replace this PC plus one with a memory of PC plus one. And this is suggesting... Oh, right. Not sure how that resolved incorrectly, but let's try that. 
Maybe we'll miss the target by less this time. Oh, you had a defective set. Oh, wow. You hard-coded a solution into the given file, and it came back. Jeez, that's brutal. I would have been stuck on that, because I'm not sure I could have figured that out. Um, wow, that's horrible. 31. That's better. Alright, so this blew up because I didn't pad my array. Probably. No. 481. Alright. Kind of dig into this to figure out what the fuck I did wrong. Uh, it has a minus 2 at the end. Oh. <laughs> okay. I am so confused. So here, what did I do wrong? Here I've got a nine instruction. No, that's, I'm sorry, that's not my instruction. This is my instruction, it's a one, which is add, with parameters in modes one and two. How does that match up? Yeah, all these numbers match up, it's just my processing right here fails. Uh, presumably because I have an index out of bounds somewhere on a minus two. Um, I mean, I could break this into multiple lines so I go less insane trying to debug it, but I don't think that's going to fix the error. Makes sense why the other solutions... Yeah, thank you very much. I will need as much luck as I can get. Um, Hopefully my sol well, I know this set isn't defective because I solved it in Scala after flailing about with this last time. Uh, but yeah, I'm tempted to rename this uh, Advent of Int Code because of this obsession with Int Code machines that are just brutal. Memory at P3. All right, so this, oh. Oh, that's what I'm struggling with, is that um, the write instruction, this address, can itself be dependent upon um, the mode parameter. All right, do I have a write function? I swear I've got a write function here somewhere that can handle that. I've got an adjust function. I've got an input function. I think the reason I didn't create a write function in this machine but I did in my other one, because it was easier to write in Scala than it was in Kotlin. And Kotlin, the burden I'd have to go through to actually write the write function wasn't worth it because we had only one write mode. Now we have two write modes. Um, so we're writing into memory based on a mode, based on a base, based on... Um, yeah, I need another thing here. No. Yeah, that's the problem. Is I also struggled at giving good names here. Um, but we never write... We happen to know that mode is never going to equal 1 in this form. Um, for a write instruction, it's always going to be one of those two. Um, but... Um, 
That's all we know. So here we've got a compute function. So if mode this, oh, I'm sorry. Um, P3 is going to be equal to this damn thing here. Um, for program three. Let's see, maybe I had this right the first time. Memory, this expression, if mode this, p3 that, else that, and let's just surround this whole mess in a two int block. That way we don't need multiple two int conversions. And we also don't require this two int conversion. Um, and perhaps, <laughs> wait, how, how many places am I referencing P1? A singular place here. Mm, oh, never mind. Um, that logic's, that has to be split out, but um, this one could be merged together. So it's equal to memory three, memory PC plus three plus base, else that two int. Um, so that's great. Uh, in other places, yeah, maybe I take the two end off of here and just stuff it here. I think that's a little more readable. And then we can tab this over and our code is somewhat legible. And maybe now when we compute, we don't get an index out of bounds. Yeah, we get a different message, maybe. Probably not. No, it still blew up. Um, because I'm an idiot. Uh, we need mode over 100, mod 10. That's the error. That caught me in um, Scala as well, because I'm not shifting the mode over. All right, so do I get my big ass? Yeah, there it is. Two, seven, three, whatever. Woohoo! We solved part one. Also, I've started to publish um, my um, Scala solutions with unit tests up into GitHub. Um, so I've noticed that other people have been doing that, so I'm doing it as well. Uh, I'm aware that that presents some other problems. Uh, hopefully people won't just copy what I did, but they can always copy what other people did. So am I really causing such a problem? Um, all right. So here we can reinstate those computers, make sure that we still get back those results as expected. We still have 11 days to catch up and um, three hours till the next problem gets published. And I don't think I'm going to make it in 15 minutes per problem like some people have been doing. All right, so this program will provide the input instruction, the value 2, uh, doing the same thing. Um, now notice with Kotlin, I think this is an immutable list. So I think this uh, should produce the correct solution, 50894, assuming that my instructions, um, assuming that my int code computer works. Yeah, okay. So you get two for the price of one there. Nice. Um, and I'm de fully debating, especially because... Um, if you look at 
the Dottie and Scala um, blog, they're saying that the next version of Scala is going to be out next fall. So I think next time around, if I should be so fortunate as to do this, um, we're going to be using Scala the whole way through. Um, and we're going to find some solution to make that streamable here. Even if I have to like make my own tools or I don't know. We're going to find some way to try to make it interesting using Scala. With Kotlin, I'm able to use IntelliJ IDEA, and this is beautiful, even if I'm bungling it. Um, but, um, yeah, no, this is good. We've got two gold stars. Santa might make his way home in time for Christmas, but it's not looking good. I'm telling you now. All right. Uh, did I start a ten day uh, day ten file here? Yeah, we got a day ten file. Nice. It even prints hello. I should make one of the, like prints a tree or something. Day ten, monitoring station. Um, you fly into the asteroid belt and reach the Sears monitoring station. The elves here have an emergency. They're having trouble tracking all the asteroids and can't be sure they're safe. The elves would like to build a new monitoring station in a nearby area of space. They hand you a map of all the asteroids in that region. Your puzzle input. The map indicates whether each position is empty or contains an asteroid. The asteroids are much smaller than they appear on the map, and every asteroid is in the center of in exactly in the center of its marked location. The asteroids can be described with xy coordinates, where x is the distance from the left edge and y is the distance from the top edge. Your job is to figure out which asteroid would be the best place to build a new monitoring station. A monitoring station can detect any asteroid uh, to which it has direct line of sight. That is, there cannot be another asteroid exactly between them. This line of sight can be at any angle, not just aligned uh, to the grid or diagonally. The best location is the asteroid that can detect the largest number of other asteroids. For example, consider the following map. Here is a map. The best location for a new monitoring station is the highlighted asteroid at 3-4. Oh. Okay. Well, wow, my initial thought here was this one would be great because you could see everything above and below it. And then I'm like, wait, there's five of these in a row? <laughs> okay. Hmm. Yes. The best location would be there because it detects eight asteroids more than any other location. The only it cannot detect is the one at 1-0. One, um, its view is blocked by the asteroid at 2-2. Two, two. All other asteroids are worse locations. Yep. Here's an asteroid and some examples of its line of sight, etc. Here are some larger examples. Okay. This is going to hurt. How many other asteroids can be detected from the location that's the best location? And there's your puzzle input. Well, crap. <laughs> All right. Um, so not to freak out. Try to remember. Uh, here's the syntax I've been using all along: is data class this, data class that. Uh, we're still going to call it a point. Uh, X is still going to be an int. And y is still going to be an int. Woo! All right. What have I done wrong? Uh, val. Apparently, to declare something of val type, I have to actually use the word val. All right, can I just read in one of these inputs, perhaps? I see. This might hurt. Um, yeah, I don't, well, this might work. Does Scala have multi-line string literals? I or Kotlin. 
What's this? Indent raw string, sure. Trim indent. I'm not sure that I like that, but um, yeah, we're gonna go with what I originally had typed in. All right, so. Fail field is equal to this thing. Um, how am I going to read that? Uh, okay. Field dot, dot trim dot split on new line. All right. print line of field. I don't even have a list of points. I'm just having the original field in some kind of form. What? That was not what I expected. How the heck did I even get that? Like I got brackets, but only around the last element. That doesn't make any sense. Um, all right. What if I just print that dot trim? Do I at least get my original input back? Because that would be nice. Maybe I have to make a case class field that can parse this into a set of points. I fear that I might have to do that. All right. Um, well, it doesn't matter whether I create the case class, that, or whatever. Um, I should have brought my algorithms book. I regret everything. All right, so how do I turn that into points? Um, I'm not sure that there's any good way to do it. Field dot split. Uh, just based on a new line delimiter, right? Does that work? Can I just split on new line and expect? All right. There we go. Um. So, how am I going to build up a... Mm -hmm. All right, how do I take this, this sequence? I think there's a thing zip with index, maybe? I don't know. I'm learning everything as I go here. Uh, and more and more regretting that I don't have a way to do this readily in Scala, although Scala is probably not easy to explain. Um, Kotlin sequence with index. With index is a thing can be performed on us. I forgot, with IntelliJ, I have autocomplete right here. With index. Um, there's also like an each with index, right? Or a for each with index. Yeah, whatever. Uh, there's an associate by, there's an element at. 
for each indexed. Wait. Map indexed. Beautiful. All right. So given, uh, how does this work? Yeah, that's not an example. Um, all right. Uh, Kotlin map indexed. Show me an example. With literally the word map indexed in it. Because I'm not sure, like, I could do this and print out like that or something. But you're going to tell me this is not the correct notation. So then maybe I put some parentheses around this to say that this is a function. And maybe I need a thicker arrow or something. I don't know. Like, this is why I'm trying to find an example so I can copy the syntax. Um, okay, so Google provides an example, parameter, parameter, um, single arrow, single arrow, and then what? Expression. Not sure what the big deal here is. Unexpected tokens. Oh, right, so map index is a function, but uh, it expects to be provided a function like that. All right, so I think that's valid Kotlin. And of course, 33333 is not the answer. Um, so, map indexed does what again? Int, comma, string. So, we're going to be taking, this is going to be the y coordinate. Um, B dot. Oh, and then we're going to take the string itself, s.map indexed again. Um, and this is going to take itself another function where this is going to be x, c. Um, comma y except yeah no okay why am I doing x and y when I could be doing row and column I don't know it doesn't matter as long as they're all read in the same way um, wait I don't here I don't want map indexed uh, in this innermost thing uh, <laughs> I want a collect indexed or something. I want no. Nope. So we've got map, we've got fold, we've got reduce. What are all the indexed things that I have access to? Filter indexed. I mean, yeah, but if I'm doing mapping and filtering, in Scala we just use collect for that. Um, here this might have to be two separate operations. Um, if C is equal to this character point. All right, I'm not sure how that's going to resolve. 
let's see what we end up with. It's probably... I'm lucky if it compiles. Kotlin.unit. Beautiful. Just what we needed. All right, so then we collect those back together. <sighs> so what's map in oh I'm sorry um, map indexed two I'm not sure what some of these things do so now I have to break out the documentation again which is decoupled from um, It's decoupled from any examples, but it gives the full grammar. Apply the given transformation to each element and its index in the original array and appends the results to the given destination. Oh, so map index 2 is quite nice. Um, So, I mean, I could reduce reduce index is kind of nice. Maybe I just aggregate all the points and then wait appends all elements matching the given predicate to the yeah okay. All right, fair enough. We're just going to stick the character itself into the point. I've given up at this point. So this is just going to be uh, point CXY. So that's still not useful because this is way more points than we need. Um, filter. Wait, so here we got an array of an array. Um, is there a flat map indexed? Nope. So I have to do the flat map on the other end here. Latin. That's good enough. And then I want to filter. There's not a way to filter as I flatten, right? Nope. All right. So then filter. Um, where this dot c is equal to uh, an asteroid. Okay, what's my problem now? Do I actually need to specify a function? Can I not? Um, I mean, that looks like a predicate to me. Underscore dot C is equal to um, that. Required point to Boolean. OK, you win. We're going to specify it this way, and you're not going to like it. And then you're going to tell me um, that I should have done it the other way. And that's fine. Um, yeah, so this P arrow P seems entirely unnecessary. But I can't do an underscore there either. I don't understand. Um, let's see, do we end up with something sensible now? Have I read in the problem data? 
one zero. Yeah, so there's one zero. Um, or four zero, etc. So it's all there. Um, I probably would have saved myself some sanity if I'd done row column form. Oh well. You know what? I'm gonna change. Wait, is there a syntax given here? Okay, so they do explain that this is at one zero. So we're gonna keep the syntax I have. It's at least consistent with the problem description, even if I don't care for it. Um, okay. So. Um, I guess we'll use some indentation to try to bring some order to the madness. It won't work, but we can pretend that it does. There. Five lines of code. It's still not readable. And the worst of it's this part in the middle. And sticking that on one line doesn't really make it any more or less readable. But. Uh, okay, that's cool. Um, then we got another filter down here. We still get the same answer this way. Um, so that's just reading in the problem spec. So the challenge is finding the point that has visibility to the most other points. And our problem input is probably not that challenging. Um, if I had to guess. So let me think. This is where I start to have a headache. I wish I had the algorithms book with me. Um, so I can still reduce this further into the points that I actually wanted. Well, it doesn't matter if I have this extra attribute here or not. Um, so, <clears throat> to find the thing that can see the most other points. Well, an ugly way to do that would be find the, the dot product between three points and find, um, I forget how to do dot products. I know it's a thing. It's when you take vectors and you're like, well, let's look it up. Wiki dot product. Do, do, do. A1, B1, A2, B2, etc. And here we have a 2D space. And the point of a dot product is, well, I'm sorry, you could use that to figure out if lines are perpendicular. Um, I thought there was some other notion, like to find if points were collinear. The inner product space. Um, yeah, how do I, oh, cross product. Is that what I'm thinking of? Probably. No. An inner product space is a vector space with an additional structure called an inner product. Yeah, that's not what I'm... All right. There's some mathematical stuff to figure out the angle between points. And if the angle between points is zero, 
um, then your points are all collinear. So collinearity. Let's determine if a set of points are lying in a single line. They're said to be collinear. Points on a line, etc. In geometry, quadrilaterals, hexagons, etc. Collinearity of points whose coordinates are given. In coordinate geometry in an n-dimensional space, a set of three or more distinct points are collinear if and only if the matrix of the coordinates is of rank one or less. Um, yeah, so you could have a matrix reduction, sure. I just thought there was some simple operation that could be performed with vectors to see if indeed they are collinear. And it's really sounding like they're not, there isn't such a thing, even though I thought there was one. Yes, yeah, so if there's a multiplier, it's just the whole divide by zero thing that screws all this up, which is why you have to do something special to detect collinearity. Um, How to check if three points are collinear. If the slope of two or more points appears are the same, but um, that's assuming that there is a slope. And that's, I thought there was an easier way. Slope comparison. Oh, slope comparison can be done without division. That's the deal. The area is zero in the determinant of the array 1ab, 1mn, 1xy. Um, yeah, which is to say that if you're yeah, okay, okay. Um, fun area. I'm going to come up with a better name. Uh, E1 is a point. Yeah, you could apply stuff like Hero's formula and all the works there. We're not doing that. Um, oh, we also don't necessarily need to define things are vales or vars here, right? I can just specify the type of the parameter. Um, so, uh, linear is what we're going to call this, or collinear, or whatever, is equal to. Um, how do I write this out without confusing myself? This is going to be uh, n minus b times x minus m. We're checking if that is equal to y minus n times m minus a. Now, these are for points a, b, x, y, and m, n. So we're going to say p1 dot x, p1 dot y. All right. And the other things, there's an m, n, and an m, n, and an m, n, and all that all over the place. We have a point x, y. So that's going to be p3 dot x p3.y. All right, and uh, can put p2 on both sides of this. p2.x. Uh, p2. 
p2.x, p2.y, p2.y. So yeah, that's the way to check if points are collinear. Ew. Variable expected. Huh? Either these are, oh, if these are equal, um, yeah, we know that that's Boolean. All right. So we just need the thing that uh, is collinear with the fewest points, or the point from which we have the fewest collinear points. So. Um, suppose we could do all these transformations on the field itself. Instead of doing it all here, we can chain all this stuff together over here. And here we could print out field. Ah, uh, we want to count. For each point in the field, there's so many other points. How many of them are indeed collinear? Uh, let me think. Uh, let's see. Count of expression. E1, um, I want to take field in a triple product like with itself, I don't know, like I'm going to iterate through each element of field, I don't know, I'm confusing myself. I need a data structure to keep this all sane, but I don't have one in mind at the moment. I mean, yeah, these are some beautiful puzzles, that's for sure. Um, I am appreciative that we got away from the int code computer. Well, so I want to produce a list of... Uh, this doesn't check for direction. <laughs> oh, God. Um, that's not great. Because it's entirely possible that the best point for the monitoring station could be... Like, if you had a 3x3 three three grid, the best monitoring point would be the center point even though it's collinear with everything it sees all eight other points um, yeah so things being collinear is not the only property we want to check and the slope is not the only thing we want to check um, we also want to check if a point is obstructed due to collinearity. So, um, fun f p1 point p2 point 
point is equal to um, it's equal to some expression here p3 dot x oh yeah minus p1 dot x sine equal to p2 dot x minus p1 dot x sine and the same thing for the y coordinates This is so ugly. Um, and so now if they're in the same kind of orientation, uh, then we need to check for collinearity. Otherwise, there's no need to check. Jeez. All right. Well. Um, and perhaps for my own sanity, uh, fun A, no. Here, let's just grab these two functions, stuff them inside here before I completely lose my mind. And we're just checking, um, Wow, I picked some unfortunate variable names. <laughs> oh my goodness, are these unfortunate. Um, it's okay, we can always rename them. Yeah, so we'll factor P1 out of that. Factor P1 out of this. And collinear. Um, yeah, P1's not a thing there either. Here, we're going to factor P2 out as it's the most repeated term in the sequence. Again, very unfortunate choice of variable names. And now we can choose to uh, refactor if we so desire. So. Um. <laughs> How do I refactor? Refactor rename is shift F6. All right, I see Lieutenant Hummus is in the middle of his code, advent of code catch up. He calls it a catch up. He's on day 17. He's like a week ahead of me and he says he's catching up. I'll show you catching up. <laughs> If I can, which I can't, especially because he's faster. So, yeah, go watch him. We'll struggle with this. Um, so, I want to know. It might be easier to just compare collinearity first, and if they are collinear, check if the orientation's the same. Actually, if these are in the same x direction and they're collinear, um, then they're also in the same y direction. There we go. That's kind of legible. Um, yeah, nice. Uh, okay. So, and if I want to call this, I don't know. Hey, hey, hey. If I want to count these, if that, oh, if 
this condition is satisfied, this big old thing, one else two. No, I don't like that. I've taken something simple and pure and messed it up, so. Yeah, F. We still need a better name for the function, but it functions, so. All right, so print line filter or field. Um, count. Um, field count. No, field that for each. I don't know. So for each P1, we want to count something. For each this, we want to count something. Um, how do I triply iterate through field? Is count really the thing I want to keep using throughout this? I'm just having the most epic headache. Um, so we have a P1. I mean, if I do this... Oh. Right, that's a boolean condition. Um, I'm wanting to do something for each element of field. I guess I want to map field dot count something. Wait, no, field dot something. I want to, how do I twice iterate through the same collection? Sum. Also, why do I get the sense that field is a string? Let's print that out again. Field should be just a whole bunch of points. It's not a char uh, sequence. Somehow I did get this thing printed out. That has me confused. I didn't think I was printing it. <laughs> um, when did that get printed out? Map indexed, map indexed, flatten filter, etc. I just want to iterate through my damn collection and build up some statistics. Why is that so tricky? Um, it's tricky because of my choice of data structures that all I've got right now is a point. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I could build up a real graph here, couldn't I? A graph would be a set of points and edges. And each edge could contain two or more points. That would be logical. Um, so we got our field. Um, field 
dot something. Two collections, that's not what I'm looking for. Map? Map is not right, though. Zip with next is also not right. And why does this keep suggesting char sequences? I'm not wanting to do stuff with char sequences. Okay, I'm sorry. Let me look through all the candidates here. Capitalize, code point at, code point comment, decapitalize, drop last, filter, intern, pad, prepend, region matches, remove surrounding. I don't particularly care for this list of suggestions. I'm not wanting to do some sort of string operation, and yet almost every operation here has to do with strings. A sequence, chunked. I want to produce, for each element, I want each element to contain a list of all the elements. So that's like the opposite of um, several of these operations. Generally, in operation, you'll want to take a multiple dimension space and reduce the space. Here I'm wanting to expand the space. Um, but I'm not seeing a product function here. Zip is probably what I'm seeking, but it's expecting the parameters to be something other than what I'd expect. Coerce. How deep does this list go? This is a deep list. There's a lot of suggestions here. <laughs> That's cool. Ooh. <sighs> I mean, yeah, I know I could just iterate through every position. Zero, 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 one, zero, two. I want something more elegant. And I'm causing myself quite a bit of grief by trying to do something more elegant. But also, I'm not impressed by the set of library functions. Perhaps the reasons I just don't know what I can do with each of these. Like I could do map and then from map I can say produce a list of all the points. Um, but here even here it's suggesting char to r and field is not a char. It's not a string it's something else. It's not a list of point, but I can pretend it is and have the compiler tell me exactly what this is. Um, I forget. Do I have to do a list of point like that? And then you're going to tell me, oh, that's not a list of point. You should have called this a list of... You're calling this is, this is a string, apparently. The end result of this damn operation is a string. Uh, like if I call this an int, you're going to tell me that's not an int. That's a string. Uh, I'm pretty sure that the end result of all this stuff here is not a string. Even if I strip that out, Still not a string. Yeah, I don't know like what's going on there. Yes, I've chained together a lot of really complicated things, but the type inference should be able to handle this, and it's not handling it. Um 
So no. All right, and now if I say that this is an int, you're going to tell me that's not an int. That's a something. Now you're going to tell me it's a list of point. All right. So apparently there was something going on there. I think maybe the fact that this wasn't a multi-line string literal is what threw it off. Um, so I can call this input. I can call this field. And now if I print line field, okay, that's a thing, but hopefully I'll get better autocomplete possibilities here. Um, things I can do with points now instead of with a string. Uh, I could define a collection type that ranks each of these points by the number of non-collinear things. It occurs to me, like, that's kind of amazing. Like, you could define a custom map type that defines an ordering for point, where the ordering's defined by looking at, like, everything. That's just nuts that's even possible. Um, <laughs> to sort it set. Yeah. It could be done. Uh, and then you could define the comparator. Is this really what I'm doing? Just because I can. <sighs> that seems so wasteful. Well, okay. First in point. Um, now, comparator only operates on two elements at a time. So you'd need a way to keep track of all the points such that the comparator could, without looking at the entire graph, figure out which points um, offer um, visibility to the greatest number of points. Um, can I take this field and multiply it? I no. Okay, what happens if I do field times field here? Yeah, you're gonna tell me that's not valid. All right, uh, Kotlin list product. How do I do a product with a list? And you're going to tell me how to do an inner product, and I'm not going to be happy. Or a scalar product. I want a matrix from my list. Oh, you can have a list of products. Yeah, thank you. That's exactly not what I was looking for. <laughs> Uh, okay, whatever. Um, I'm sorry, I'm being too snarky today. I'm making no progress and um, debating what do I want to try to do next here. You can use reduce in Kotlin, but that produces the wrong kind of product. Um, all right, um, wait, field minus the thing, nope, can't do that.
Okay, I can do this. So here's a map of, for each point, here's the field without that point. So here's a list of all the other points for each point. So but that's not a map. This is just here's an array that doesn't contain the first point. What I want is a map with an index. Uh, crap. Yeah, I'm wanting something different than what I'm producing. I don't know I'm going to be able to figure this out, so um, I will try this off stream in Scala, see how far I get with it, and see if this uh, merits coming back and trying to do it in Kotlin, because um, I don't know, I'm uh, not being productive at the moment. This is a cool problem. Um, I did get alerts in advance that this would be the sort of problem, and they had ideas about how they were going to do this, and again, uh, a procedural style does kind of suit this well, where you're able to just iterate through every x, y coordinate, and so on and so forth. I could write the same way inside um, Kotlin. I could say for each x, for each y, do the following. I want something more elegant. Um, but also, nothing's coming to me at the moment, so. Um, also, like, uh, this sort of thing, I haven't really found a good solution. I have figured out how to do resource files in Kotlin, but unlike with the simple build tool and Scala, I can't just quickly dump together a whole bunch of resources and keep it separate from the assets that I'm delivering as part of my main code base. I have to define my own like test package and my test resources. Um, there's not a well-defined pattern that I'm aware of for doing that with Kotlin and IntelliJ, but correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I'll do some research about that. Yeah, uh, so hopefully you enjoyed day nine. Uh, we are gonna try to come back. I want to try to catch up with this um before the 25th and we are running out of time so it's possible this might extend into the new year we'll find out santa might be a bit stranded he'll get his way home eventually but this might take twice as long as i thought it would take so we'll see all right uh thanks for watching have a good night